mean, techno music with you know hardware, and and then went more into like computer stuff, and then I felt frustrated, stuck in in um, in the box with the computer, and um, it was really through um, seeing uh, Jamie Blawan, how him playing live, and it was that thing again where it just really looked like fun, yeah. and it was very hands-on, and I don't really like deep menus and stuff like that. I just like to work with really hands-on gear so um, and then but it was only this was only like a little over two years ago and I came in here and I played around with some gear and ordered some stuff and and then I initially I was going to use it in the studio only but then I brought it out to a gig and I had a way I found a way of kind of syncing it with Ableton and uh, it just sounded so great live that I, I kept using it and gradually my setup, uh, that would, I would call that like DJing with some live stuff over the top and gradually the computer disappeared. Mm, and okay. uh, and this, uh, this today is like the current setup that I do techno gigs with. So now I don't DJ anymore. It's only, it's only live improvisation now. I mean, it would work like I would have Ableton and I would play some pre-record, you know, some tracks from Ableton and then just jam over the top. And that was really, that was really, really good fun as well. For I did that for maybe like a year or something. Okay. And you've, you've uh, given up DJing at this point? Did I understand that correctly? Or? At, the, at the moment. At the yeah. moment, yeah. yeah. I don't say like never, but, right. but um, I'm have, this is like where my focus is for live performance because... Uh, yeah, I'm really uh, inspired by the idea of improvisation from without having really much musically prepared, you know, and just really in just listening to what's happening and interacting with that and also playing, performing with other people in that same way as well, like a pure live improvisation. I've been involved with techno music for a long time and I, I like it because... Uh, there are certain rules, there are certain kind of rules to it, but you can you can play around with it and stretch it a lot without people wa leaving. Oh. <laughs> you know, walking out. Um, you right. know, they still you can. There's a lot. There's a lot you can play with, and that and that's really the fun. That's why I still enjoy doing it because I don't feel like I've explored everything. Or I don't. Know, you can. I think you can. As long as you have a really regular pulse rhythm. It's amazing how experimental you can be over the top, and that's that's what's fun to explore. So the, with the DJing, that would be like the bed, the kind of bed of the music, which made people think, oh yeah, this is techno, and then you can just go crazy over the top, and <laughs> right. they kind of don't realise. In the early 90s in Birmingham, um, some friends played in a kind of, I don't know, space rock band, and um, yeah, I used to play some old, I don't know, some old Roland synthesizer I borrowed, borrowed from someone and I played tape loops and things like that. So it was just, I don't know, I, I'm i really open about music. I'm not like fixed on a certain genre or something like that. It's just, um, you know, exploring different ways of performing and different kinds of music and in performing with different people and that's really, that's really fun for me. The, the, the kind of rules for me behind this setup is it's uh, it has to be something that I can carry on as hand luggage on a flight that's really the that's like the bottom line for me because I don't want to check stuff in because I remember checking records in and seeing how smashed up the, the case comes out so um, basically this uh, the case yeah we've just got a small lid that fits over the top and I'm able to travel with it patched which is really important because when I set up at a gig it's totally dark and I can't see and it would be a real stress to, to patch something. Um, and then I just have a, the Opta track and, uh, and a reverb pedal and that's just, that just fits in my backpack. Um, so it's a really, a really compact setup and um, yeah, the other thing we were talking about earlier is um, it's like I discipline myself to, to only use this, what's this size? I don't even know. Yeah, 208 HP. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah. So, um, so if I want to put a new module in, I have to take another one out 
and it, it just it's a good way to discipline myself to not take more and more gear and I think um, I see some people play live and they're using so much gear and it's I can see they're just in a stress because they're not really in control of the system they're using and I believe it's better to focus on less gear and do more with it and kind of I also believe in not making things too easy for yourself because then it forces you to work hard and, and be inventive, I think. Um, so, yeah, basically in this rack, um, I've got like the Joe Mox uh, kick drum module for the kick drums. Um, Um, for the vault, for the for notes, I've got I've got it. Uh, I have a Turing machine, and that is going into a, um, a pitch quantizer just to tame it a little bit, and um, I have that going into the just a, a just friends. Yeah, just friends and a mangrove, and um, I always forget what that one's called. It's uh, the um, the noise engineering one. The lil it's a bit hard to pronounce. I think that might be. Worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it exactly. So um, what do we got? Yeah, so. kind of CVs coming from the Quadra for giving some kind of accents to this one. And let's see. Oh yeah, so the... I have the Octatrack and that is... Um, I've got, coming out of the headphone output of the Octatrack, I've got uh, like a recording of a modular pulse I'm feeding that into the tempi and that's what keeps everything in time and that way I can connect with other people with like MIDI uh, MIDI sync to them and yeah I have uh, the I have the tempi give, running my my hi-hats and, and some open hi-hats um, and I um, and I, I basically use the Octatrack as um, I don't really do a whole lot with the Octatrack because I don't really like it. Um, but I didn't really find anything that 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 solves that performs what this does in a better way, really. Um, so I basically use it as a looper. So um, oh yeah, also. Uh, in the system, I have uh, I have the U the Unify mixer, uh, which is a stereo mixer, and I use uh, I don't use it in stereo. I use it to send a signal to one of either of the two outputs. Uh, one of the outputs is going into the um, the reverb pedal, and then that goes into <coughs> the the Octatrack, and that's going into the looper. Then the other output is going directly into the Octatrack and that's just a dry signal. So that lets me send different uh, different parts of this either into the looper and the reverb or 
or just a dry signal. So I would tend to have the percussion just going into the Octatrack uh, dry and then the kind of riffy stuff uh, going into the looper through the reverb. And then I just have a, I just have a stereo out from the Octatrack or sometimes I might plug the dry signal into the mixer as well. Um, and could you tell us a bit about um, how you're using the QMMF4 here? Cause oh it yeah, seems like a, well I just... Big part of it. Um, so the, the, the Schwemann, that is doing... Um, so yeah, I'm using the four channels of that, and I'm I, I've got the kick I've got the kick drum going into that, and I can um, let's see what do we got here. Um, yeah, I can use that to um, kind of I use the resonator to pick out different different um, different parts of the the frequency of the kick drum. It's pretty. Uh, it, it's quite uh, dramatic. See, yeah, then I've got the then I've got the hi hats, hi hats and clap going into um, into another channel, and I can just. I can, uh, I can play around with them, and then uh, another uh, another one of the channels I've got the the noise engineering module going into that. So uh, self uh, self resonate that, and that's quite fun. To give me some kind of percussive zap kind of noises, and then then I have the the fourth one. I have that um, with the the one volt per octave going into it and um, self-resonating, so that's giving me this kind of bass line. Oh, that sounds good. And so, and then uh, the output from that is going through the, the wave folder. So, oops. Uh, I'm feeding that riff into the 
is really an important part of this this setup because um, it gives you the time to to change what you're doing and you're not I don't know there's a lot of pressure when you're when you don't have a looper right right um, and it uh, <laughs> yeah it lets it, it's fun to 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 um, you know maybe the decays at like 85 percent or something like that so it's like having a really long delay with a <coughs> the feedback set really high so you can continuously layer uh, feed stuff into the looper or you can use it just to catch uh, the two bars or whatever the length of that looper is. Yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to ask you. Does it have a fixed length that it sort of forces everything yeah, into? Yeah, um, I don't know. I think, I think it's as long as this lets me do it. Okay. I think that might be possibly two bars, but I, I'm not like musically trained, so I don't know. Right. I don't know what it is, but um, I'm just used to that length. Um, so yeah, the loop, the looper, the loop is a really impo important part of this of this setup. Um, Did you ever try doing the same thing without the looper at first? Uh, I did. I did when I used Ableton and I was DJ doing the, you know, modular over DJing. Mm -hmm. That I didn't use a looper then because. Uh, the looper in Ableton, the the, the latency thing, yeah, means exactly. that it, it doesn't it's, it doesn't work. That's why I have to use the Octatrack or a different kind of hardware looper. Right. Yeah, that I seems thought really about great. the there's that there's that um, there's that delay looper module. It's a newer one. Yeah, right here, right behind us. That one. Yeah. yeah. I thought maybe that would be a solution, but it's going to take up room in my rack. Yeah. And there are other things about the Octatrack that. Other functions I use like the yeah like the MIDI and uh, all of that kind of thing. So yeah, the fact that it's also the master clock makes it great because then it's automatically quantized to everything. Like the loop will be quantized to yeah yeah yeah. It's very nice. Yeah and yeah, if you change the tempo, it 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 doesn't like that. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I guess are there any any questions from anyone about any of this? Um, I I would use I would use like I just use some really basic um, percussion sometimes. Also, I can uh, I can use some kind of uh, where are we? Some kind of like uh, these kind of I can record some like uh, long long loops just of some backing stuff. But I always. <laughs> As, a, as something to kind of fall back on, but I always find that I have the most fun and it sounds the best when it's coming coming from here. It's just as a, I don't know, if I have to play a longer set or something like that to give me a little bit of a breather, um, it's something to fall back on, but really it's the most fun and sounds the best when it's coming, coming from here. Do you ever record it actually into the Octatrack as well? Like What's that? Record sounds from the modular into there and then Sample them. Yeah, some of the some of the backing is from the modular and the easel and other right. different things like that. But it took me a while to to get the backing tracks right to be, have enough space in them for you know uh, to not <laughs> clash with the stuff that's coming from the modular. Is it uh, Big task tool. I see it's very raw without compression, compression or EQ. When you go to the club and plug in with the levels and everything, and also live, sometimes it can be yeah. Some it's um. Loud or something. I think um. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting thing because I'm I'm basically, you, you know, there's not really many people doing this, and everyone else is is DJing with with really like brick wall mastered music. So obviously it sounds really really different. But what I usually find is that when I set up, the sound guy is like, oh, wow. And he's like really excited and, and you know, I make friends with the sound guy. And, uh, you know, uh, so I don't use any kind of compression or limiting or anything like that. You know, I really love the, the liveliness and the transience in it. I think it sounds really, really, I think it sounds a lot better over a sound system. But I have to kind of have the sound guy on my side because 
I have to he has to he has to give me a lot more kind of headroom and kind of crank it up more but usually when they hear what's coming out of it it's it's the system the sound system likes it and it and they can actually turn it up a lot louder than a than a like a regular DJ set so generally that yeah that generally happens I need I need them on my side otherwise I sound quieter but it's always worked out really well and in the end it's always sounding really good um, I'm at the mercy of like how the monitors are I have to have good monitors because I'm I'm live constructing and mixing everything and if I can't hear then I yeah it's impossible really um, but only a very few times it was really difficult like that. Generally, it's just a case of me getting used to the sound, and um, it seemed to yeah, it seemed to work out okay. And is the approach in the studio then the same? So um, you don't have to tweak too much. What's that? The approach in the studio, the uh, record the studio. Uh, let it more rough. Uh, it didn't. It didn't used to be, but recently I've I've done some recording in the studio with this same setup. And what I would do would be, uh, I would record like track length jams just with the the riffy parts, and then I would um, assemble. I would assemble it in a on a computer, um, like multi. Uh, no, I would have a whole like a whole improvisation, the length of a track, yeah. which is basically everything except the drums. Mm -hmm. And then I would like add, I would add the drums to fit what the, what the riffy parts are doing, mm -hmm. and then just mix it so afterwards. Performance. Yeah, it's very, it's very, the, the, the really good thing about the hardware is, it's like the, bringing more of the human into it, and not being so, um, sterile and just with the machine with a computer or something it's like uh, that's what I feel with this type of setup and this rough improvisation it's like bringing more of the human into the the man and machine human and machine um, combination and I think that's that's where the electronic music is the most exciting for me is when there's this balance between or a fight sometimes right. <laughs> between the human and the machine Agreed. Do you, um, by the way, on that topic, use the same system that we have here when you play with other people? Yeah, um, when I perform on my own, or with um, Jamie, or with, with Colleen, um, yeah, I always use the same system. But the system changes and it evolves. Um, you know, before I put the, the Schwamen in there, there was a lot, you know, a lot had to come out to make room for that. But, um, it's just, uh, I like that discipline of it has to fit in this space and I have to figure out another way of, I don't know, clock dividing or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun way to perform. And, and it's also, um, you know, like a lot, a lot of DJ sets are very, um, are very perfect and I like the way you know we were talking about the, the levels and stuff yeah. I like the way this is rougher and I, I I sense that an audience enjoys that they they pick up and I it doesn't matter if they don't understand technically that doesn't matter they they can feel that someone's doing something live right there and I think that's much more exciting yeah. than yeah, a, than a really perfect uh, playback or something like that um, because I, I used a I used Ableton for years for DJing with, and I really enjoyed it, but it just got I don't know. I just was looking for something a really different angle. So this is like a totally different thing and much rougher. And uh, I don't know. I I think people respond really well to the roughness of it. And there was a situation where you would fall off the cliff. Oh yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. The so I mean you know it it's patched. Um, you know, I don't patch it live, yeah. but um, you know the way that the Turing machine works, and and I tap the rhythms in, and uh, you know I don't really have something pre-prepared, and I just have to go with what's there, and if I don't like it, I have to change it. But it's like right there in front of everyone. Um, so if you have a bad day and 
you don't have ideas or something. Yeah, if, if it's going bad, I just have to work harder <laughs> at it. And, but I, I, you know, it's, more, it's a more of a challenge and it's more fun to perform. You know, I think that like maybe we're talking about people performing live with a big, um, a big setup and they think that this is making it easier, it's safer, you know, they've got more to fall back on. But really, uh, making things too safe, uh, I think that holds you back somehow. And it's it's it can be better to push and challenge yourself more. Uh, I don't know. I think I think the result the results are more exciting if you if you push yourself more. Yeah. And do do you um, play with the system a lot in the studio with the like when you're patching, say for a gig? Do you spend a given number of hours, say, working on a new yeah. patch? Or? Oh, so yeah. So I I really look at this this system. To me, this is like this is the instrument that I that I perform with. So I look at the whole thing as an instrument. And when I you know when I put different modules in and re or repatch, you know, I'm changing the instrument. So I have to learn it. I have to learn how it behaves so that I'm comfortable with it. Because that's the worst thing yeah. is trying to perform with something. Again, it's like having too much gear. If you're not, if you're not in control and comfortable with with uh, what you're performing with, it makes it ma makes it really overwhelming. Um, I mean, it's getting the balance of it right, I suppose. Yeah. But um, yeah, I I when I change uh, parts of the system and repatch, then I do spend time learning uh, the boundaries of of how it can work. And also coming up with new techniques, but that also happens in the live performance as well. Things that have ne you know combinations I've never used come right. up. Yeah, that's very. Uh, but I try not to. I try not to. I try to play in a more like almost unconscious way. I try not to uh, consciously com control it too much. I try to really listen to what's there, and um, kind of go just go go with it really let let it let it kind of grow and um, develop how it wants to and be be very sensitive to that and not command it too much that's yeah. when the, that's when the most exciting things you know and then something comes out that I've never heard before and that's really fun and exactly. so I'm hearing it and the audience is hearing it yeah it's, it's like a dialogue in real time with the yeah, system yeah yeah so definitely like the system gives you kind of an idea that it has and you kind of contribute exactly, yeah. and then it's and you have to be you out. have to be sensitive and listen to what the system's saying right yeah I found that very interesting when you mentioned the Turing machine in particular how you were working with the patterns that it was making on the fly mm. since uh, I thought it could be pretty difficult to actually predict what, say, any given turn of a knob would produce. Uh, yeah, you can't predict. Produce, I mean, so. I can I can set the I can set the, the the sequence length, but you know, there are definitely some gigs. It's like not on my side, <laughs> right? And it's like, come on, please, please. And other other times, it's like really, really behaving. And um, but it's really I I just need to be patient and um, it, it, I don't know. I never. How long? So I, I've performed this way since last September, and I don't, I don't really, I don't, I don't think I've had a a gig where I haven't been been happy how it turned out. You know, it, I always sometimes it's harder work than other times, but it always it always got there in the end, and you know made a connection with the audience. And do you change scales on the scale, or is it like always? The same uh, scale? Yeah, I have I have a scale. Colin calls it the depressing scale. <laughs> um, it's uh, what is it? It's a C a C harmonic minor. Oh, it's okay. like a kind of yeah, Arabian kind of type of yeah. scale. And yeah, it just you know it suits techno. It's the depressing scale. <laughs> so it's always that scale. Uh, yeah, I mean I could change it, but that's that's my that's my depressing scale. Yeah, so you got me using yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've made her use it too. How often do you modify your system? Is it a continual process, or do you give it some months? And yeah. Get used to it, and then start adding new things. It's uh. I guess it's a kind of all. Yeah, I do modify it quite often. Um, just uh, I could be uh, like before a gig I'm lying I'm trying to rest in the hotel room and I'm, I'm not sleeping and then I have an idea oh yeah I could repatch it like this and you know um, so yeah I quite often patch things differently in the same system but then you know I've had my eye on the the, the Schwaman 
for a long time and it's only just recently that a few were available again so um, yeah it's more it's like when I when I have when I have a new idea about a way I can use cram something in there um, that's when but to, it's I see that almost like a, it's like the equivalent of a DJ keeping their their record box fresh you know I don't it's nice to change the instrument so that that people hear something a bit different and I have to work a bit differently keeping me on my toes I am using I'm using just friends as a VCO uh, I like the I like the way I like the way it sounds um, I can make it sound really kind of horrible yeah. and uh, but I realized that that it has a lot of other uses as well so you know I feel like this is a module that I can get deeper into in a completely different way yeah. hopefully but I don't know it's always it's always that trade-off between how big the mo a module is and how useful it is and yeah things change around for sure but um, I don't know do you have, have you used I've been, I've been flirting with the idea of getting one okay just been uh, unsure uh, yeah I mean so far I've only used it as a VCO and it, it's it it's a kind of horrible clonky metallic thing or, or quite smooth kind of bassier is it patched with other um, models from what is it called the company Mary Sisters? Yeah, mannequins. Oh yeah, I have I have the because I have all the mannequin stuff going. So uh, we've got the Mangrove and the Three Sisters, and they're both going. No, Mangrove and Just Friends. Special, uh, go going. They're both going into the. It's getting really dark in here, isn't it? Um, <laughs> They're, they're both going into the, the Three Sisters yeah. and it's in the formant filter mode and it's it's a good way of mixing the two but um, I like the way, yeah, I like I, li I like this, uh, the Three Sisters filter, the way it's kind of mixing and morphing the sounds together. I don't audition and I remember right in the beginning someone was really disturbed <laughs> that I wasn't auditioning but I, I don't know. I think that, that that would kind of interrupt me and it would slow things down and I basically it's from knowing the system kind of kind of what it kind of what it's going to sound like but I just I just like bring the level up gradually and if it sounds horrible I'll change it <laughs> you know and then and it's just live auditioning and I don't know that's somehow part of the process and it doesn't slow me down and I don't know it's I guess it's whatever works really do you check the crowd how, how, how they react I think I I really feel yeah. I I have a really strong feeling about how the crowd is is um, experiencing it um, but I don't know I think uh, I don't know I it's really important to to um, test the crowd's patience sometimes <laughs> and uh, I don't know it's like yeah I, I don't believe in giving people what they want 100% of the time um, it's kind of more fun that way and more rewarding I think for, for everyone but um, oh yeah another another point about about this setup compared to compared to DJing that, I, that I've, I've experienced I'm I'm sure that that uh, audiences are much more they uh, they will accept much more experimental music from from uh, this setup and I haven't I don't know why that is exactly yeah uh, I think I don't know if I'm explain I'm not really explaining it very well so if I played as a DJ people would get mad a lot quicker <laughs> when I'm playing weird stuff than if I'm playing with this because I don't know maybe it's because they sense that it's live or I don't yeah, know yeah maybe they feel like they is. understand there's more, it more or there's more tol right? people toler have a greater tolerance <laughs> for live acts for some reason which is which is good because you know n performing in this way it's not like peak amazing tracks 100% of the time but that's that's like part of it where you know so, um, a kind of track if we call it that comes together and it's 
you know, I'm feeling it, the audience is feeling it, they're kind of locked into it. And then it'll start to disintegrate and, and um, fall apart, really. And that's part of the process. But the, the audience, they seem to tolerate that and let it happen. And then a new thing comes together. So I haven't, I don't understand quite why that is, but I'm, I appreciate it because otherwise I w I'd get a lot more things thrown at me. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of fun. So uh, uh, yeah, have a go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just do it. Don't don't be afraid. That's really really important. Don't don't hold yourself back by being afraid of trying something. It's uh, it's that's that's really really important. I think in in all of this all of uh, in life. <laughs> <laughs>